by Kay Jewers. You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Tonight, the Duke Blue Devils look to extend the nation's longest home winning streak as they take on the Elon Phoenix of the Colonial. It is great to be with you, Mike Morgan, alongside former Virginia All-American Corey Alexander. The Duke Blue Devils, you know the story, number two in the nation, already some impressive wins, but they've been off the court for a while now, 11 days without a basketball game. So, Corey, as a former player, I'll ask you, how do you shake off the rust early in this game? Well, the only way you can really shake the rust off is to get out on the court and get some game action. Practice is great, and Duke coaches said they've had great practices, but there's nothing like playing in the game. Recruiting, as we all know, is the lifeblood of any program. And the Duke Blue Devils have the number one recruiting class, and it's already paying off major dividends. And the leader of that number one recruiting class is the number one player in the country, Jalil Okafor, who's been even better than advertised, coming in averaging 17 points per game, shooting 65% from the field, and is the best big man in the country right now. Gotten a lot of help from Justice Winslow, one of the Duke's best defenders. And, of course, Tyus Jones coming off his biggest game at Wisconsin in a huge win, a road win for Duke a couple of days, two weeks ago. And of course, Duke led by that man, head coach Mike Krzyzewski, now in his 35th season as Duke head coach as he inches closer and closer to a 1,000 career victories, 3-0 lifetime against Elon. It's rare to see a Coach K team start three true freshmen. That is the case, the three we just alluded to in Jones, Winslow, and Okafor. They've got some veteran leadership, though, with Emil Jefferson, and in particular at the guard spot with Quinn Cook who's had a sensational season thus far. The Elon Phoenix led by Matt Matheny now in his sixth year with the program. The 2013 Southern Conference Coach of the Year. They are now in the Colonial. The stakes have been stepped up. He welcomes the challenge and he likes the unit that he has this season. A number of veterans including Tanner Sampson in the starting lineup. A 6'4 junior who recently recorded eight threes in a game against Northwestern. A game they narrowly lost. Another packed house here at Cameron Indoor. Okafor will jump center for the Blue Devils. And we are underway. Tony Green, Jamie Lucky, and Anthony Franklin, the three officials tonight here in Durham. Elon right away going inside and right away feeling the presence of that man. Jalil Okafor. But one of the reasons Elon wants to go inside is to see if they can get Duke into foul trouble and get Jalil Okafor sitting on the bench because they know it's going to be extremely difficult to guard him at the other end. Dangerous skip pass to Hamilton on the left wing. Open three. Those will be the kind of shots that Elon is going to have to hit tonight to have a shot. Elon will get it back as it's knocked out of bounds. How about some of the keys to the game tonight, Corey? Well, well just as you mentioned, you kind of ruined it already, <laughs> giving up a key for Elon. I've been known to do that. <laughs> they have to be great from three, no question about that. If a Duke on the other end, they've got to feed the monster, and the monster's out there. I should call him a monster. I don't know if you know about the monsters, but we'll say monster for the day. The little Okafor, he's Again, the best big man in the country, no question about it. Elon doesn't have anyone to stop him in the paint. It's going to be interesting to see how Coach Matheny decides to guard him, whether they're going to trap him, they're going to let him play one-on-one, -on -one because he knows the biggest player that Elon plays is 6'7". Okafor is 6'11", closer to 7 feet, and extremely skilled will be very difficult to hold in check. Had a little bit of a shot clock issue. That was the cause for the delay. Everything is tweaked, and we're back with the action. And you see Duke putting that pressure on. This is the trademark of Duke basketball. They like to get out in passing lanes. We're not a very good defensive team last year, but now with a more traditional lineup, they've returned to their style of play. Another open three rattles out for Tanner Simpson. Okafor. High post goes to work. And a little too strong. But you can see immediately what Coach K wants to do. Establish a little open for early. There's a steal. And Elon got it right back. Jones poked it away initially. Okafor with the rebound. Blue Devils off and running.
Jefferson. Nice pass. And a foul called as Winslow hits the deck. So for Duke, you can see already going a minute and a half in this game without scoring, and that's a long drought for a team that averages close to 90 points a game, one of the best, probably the best offensive team in the country. When you look at it, they've got a great post player, but they've also got very skilled perimeter players, and this young man, Justice Winslow, has really bolstered them defensively because he's so versatile on the defensive end of the floor. The 12 points a game are great, but I think he makes them much tougher than they've been defensively in the last couple of years. Foul was on Sabato. That really was the calling card this year for the team from Mike Krzyzewski. They scored a lot of points last year. They did not play typical Duke Coach K defense this group has so far. And they have been able to do a lot of it this year. When you think about Ty Jones and Quinn Cook playing two point guards and their ability to pressure the basketball and get out in the passing lanes, and then you talk about Winslow, you really have a good group on the defensive end, but offense is their calling card. This is Blake. Strong take right at Okafor. Thirty-seven consecutive victories at home for Duke. That is the number one mark in the country. Strong take right to the hole for Winslow. And a late whistle. They got the foul as well on and one. Are they going to call offensive? I believe they got the offensive foul on that one. And one thing about this building, it gets so loud, you don't always hear the call. However, Justice Winslow attacking the basket. As you can see, a good call. The defender was setting outside of the restricted area, so therefore, that is a good call by the official. Hamilton around the screen. A teardrop. And Jefferson gobbles up the rebound. A runner. Too strong for Cook. We talked about the rust, and that's exactly what you're seeing right now. Seldom will you see a Duke team going pretty much through the first three minutes of the game without a field goal. Still only one point from the free throw strike. Jefferson backing in, firing it up. Okafor offensive rebound, and he is bear hugged. I think they got Sampson grabbing him from down below. Now Duke offensively, I mean, they basically put on a clinic, Corey. What, what flaws can you find? Well, they, they are a great offensive team, and we talked about it. They don't have any weaknesses on the offensive end. They have shooting, they have post play, and they have athleticism. So you think about all those things, but what they have right now is rust. But you can always win getting inside to a big fella just like that. <laughs> There's your WD-40 for the rust right there. Feed the monster. That's the monster right there. Now, I, I talked to him before the game, and I've had the opportunity to coach a little long before. He slimmed down a lot. I wonder why he's got the T-shirt going today. He's supposed to be showing off the guns right now. But Jalil's celebrating his 19th birthday today, so I'm sure he wants to have a big showing as well in front of the home crowd. There's a turnover right through the hands of Kevin Blake. You know, Elon, 0 for 7 from the field. They've had some good looks, but obviously the Phoenix cannot afford to miss open shots and commit turnovers. But one thing about Elon, also on the other end, they're one of the best in the country defending the three-pointer, giving up only 27% three-point field goal percentage on the defensive end. But they have nothing. <laughs> that has nothing to do with three-point defense right there. You got to have somebody that can go up top with Justice Winslow. Beautifully designed play from the sidelines of Coach K. Contact. Game the chicken wing. Did Kevin Blake an offensive foul? We talked about Elon defensively. However, there's no defense. For the perfect alley oop, especially when you've got an athlete like Justice Winslow going to get it, and a great passer like Quinn Cook delivering it on the dime. Justice Winslow, a 6'6 freshman. Body is chiseled, great leaper. Sometimes you look at these young men like that one, and you say, are they really 19 years old? Well, believe it or not, <laughs> Justice Winslow isn't 19 years old yet. He's 18. <laughs> Jalil celebrating 19 today. A beautiful move on the baseline. Nice take. 
for Luke Eddy. And Luke Eddy was the guy that Elon needed to get in the game. He's not a starter, but yet their leading scorer and has had a great start to the season. Okafor traveled that time. He's very nifty with his footwork ordinarily, but picked up the step on that one. Not this time, though. Gets free, slams it home. Duke up early. And exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Duke on top, 7-2 early going here from Cameron Indoor Stadium. 15-24 to play in the first half. We talked so much about the Duke freshmen. They start three of them. They'll play more than that. Look at the rankings. Number one center, number four point guard, number 15 small forward, and the number 21 shooting guard in Grayson Allen. Oh, no, no, no. They're not that, no, they're fourth to in the country, not, not in yes. that position. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but because these guys, when you're talking about some of the best, Tyus is the best point guard in the country. Right. Justice is one of the two best wing players in the country. And then Grayson Allen, one of the best shooting guards in the country, who really can't get minutes right now because right. his team is so deep. You still got to think about Rasheed Sumo and Matt Jones, both coming off the bench, who were McDonald's All-Americans in the past couple of years. So Duke with nine McDonald's All-Americans is tied with Kentucky for the most in the country. And it's a loaded team, but one thing they don't have a lot of is interior depth. They really only have three big guys to play right now. Because of that log jam, the news coming out earlier yesterday about Shami Ojale, we'll talk about that later on, but a 6 6'8 sophomore who has decided to transfer. He's not getting a whole lot of minutes for the Duke Blue Devils. There's the open three, and another miss. Elon's just been shaky from outside. Luke Eddy's not going to get a much better look. Out of bounds to Duke. Now, Ojale was a guy, a scoring machine in high school. He scored over 2,700 points. Just a case of a guy, Corey, where it just didn't fit right now into getting major minutes for Duke. Well, and one thing about, you know, when you come to one of the elites, the Dukes, the Kentuckys, North Carolinas, Kansas, on and on and on, there's, no, there's not a huge window of opportunity. You either show that you're really good from the beginning, you can sit and wait, no question about that, and you earn your time. Emil Jefferson has done just that. But if you're impatient and you feel like you need to be out there, this might not be the spot for you, and that's obviously what Ojale found. As Quinn Cook knocks down his first shot, that's the first shot from anyone other than the freshman <laughs> to start this game off. So you see the folks at Duke is really getting those guys started off. But when you come to one of these places and you don't show early that you're going to be a contributor, you better have some patience because there's always going to be new guys coming in that are ready to play. And Elon can just not buy a bucket from outside. Duke goes inside, and an easy deuce for Emil Jefferson, the 6'9 junior from Philadelphia. And one of the benefits of the way Duke plays right now, they play two point guards. Steal, look out. Timeout, Elon. We talked about the defensive presence of Justice Winslow. And he's a guy that can guard multiple positions. As you see, picking up a defender full court, getting the hands in there, and of course, knowing how to finish it once he gets his hand on the basketball. And that's just a great play. Again, if just a defender, he's not a guy that you can play with. You better beat him straight line because he's one of the best at getting his hands on the basketball. Now Duke got off to a little rusty start again an 11 day layoff but since then six of six and of course most of those coming in the paint when I don't think we've seen Duke shoot a three yet no so when you think about it you know but that was the focus of coach K I'm sure coming in this game was to make sure they took advantage of the size and beat Elon in the painted area where they don't feel that they can have they have the opportunity to be able to guard him. I believe they got Winslow whistled for a foul. What Duke has done offensively, you know, today's day and age of college basketball, you're shooting even close to 50%. That's a win. If you're shooting 54% from the field, that's just beyond outstanding, and that's where they are right now behind Notre Dame. And that's great for Duke. 
but wow, how about Notre Dame? And you think about it because Duke had Jalil Okafor. And of course, August is very good at Notre Dame, but he's not Jalil Okafor. And you think about Notre Dame with Grant and Jackson, Connaughton, they're doing it from the perimeter and is shooting 56% of the team. That's, that's special for Mike Bray's group. Well, you know, Mike Bray does have some Duke ties, so I guess we can talk about him. That is true as well. The six degrees of Mike Krzyzewski. <laughs> it's more than six degrees. <laughs> Blue Devils already going to the bench. The aforementioned Grayson Allen in the game now. Nice pass. Easy slam for Jefferson. Yeah, how about that? You take out Quinn Cook, Ty Jones, and Justice Winslow, and you bring in Rasheed Suleiman, Matt Jones, and Grayson Allen. Not a lot of drop-off there, to say the least. You're talking about the most talented wing in Jackson college basketball. Tough pass. And all Grayson Allen could do is save it into the hands of Elon. There's a rare basket in transition for the Phoenix. That's Christian Hairston off the bench. That snapped the streak where Elon had missed 10 of 11 from the field. And Elon wants to play fast. I'm not sure if it's going to be beneficial for him tonight, but that is their style. That's their culture. They want to get up and down the floor, so they're not going to just sit and wait for Duke to set up their defense. Now Coach Matt Matheny telling us, we're going to play our game. We need to get some buckets in transition. Deep three. At some point, those shots are going to start falling for Tanner Sampson and the Phoenix. Well, the good thing about here, this is a great shooter's gym. It's not a huge arena where you think about seeing so much space. It's almost like playing the hospital gym. And Elon can shoot it. I believe at some point they'll get it going. It's simply about how far down will they be when that happens. Timeout on the floor, 11.53 to play. Winslow giving the rim a workout. Then Okafor. How about a third slam? Winslow again, Duke up big. The Blue Devils played their first road game of the year against then second rate Wisconsin a couple of weeks ago and walked away with a solid 10 point victory. Tyus Jones, one of those heralded freshmen, led the way a season high 22 points. Duke answering the bell in their biggest test of the year, a 10 point victory on the road. We haven't talked much about Tyus Jones yet, Corey, but he is certainly something special. Well, and that's one of the really the issues with Tyus Jones and, of course, talking with Coach Jason Capel before the game started. Associate head coach Jeff Capel, I can't call him his brother. He's going to be mad at me now. <laughs> Associate head coach Jeff Capel for Duke. He talked about Tyus and his best games have been against Wisconsin and the second half against Michigan State. But the thing about Tyus in a game like this, why this was so important for him was to be able to come out and be aggressive in comparison to not, I won't say chilling because that's not it, but not being extremely aggressive. And they want him to be aggressive at all times. But games like this, he really doesn't do it. But he shows up big in the in the big games. A little too hot to handle on the pass. That's the fifth turnover on Elon. It'll be Duke ball. Now I got a text from Jason Caper yesterday, and I talked to Jeff today. And now we'll be in trouble with both of them because I called Jeff. Yeah, Jason. You can't win. I know. I don't know how I don't know how these guys get along anyway. One brother goes to North Carolina, another one at Duke. <laughs> Open look for Matt Jones. Can't find the mark. Nice bucket inside. That was Tony Sabato starting center. And Tony Sabato, not a big scorer for the Phoenix yet. Finding his way to an open spot, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Plumley was helping out. Quick take to the bucket by Suleiman. He's really been playing well of late. He has, and he was huge against Wisconsin. 14 points for him. And really, he's going to be the X factor, in my opinion, this year for Duke because he's a guy as a junior is coming off the bench and sacrificing a lot, allowing the freshman really to start and be able to shine. But they're going to need him to be successful. Pass inside. Mid-range jumper. And Duke will clear it. It's Quinn Cook. Crossover and the kick. Got it. 
Duke again just showing you a little bit of why they're so dangerous. You have so many guys that can attack you off the dribble, and then they have so many guys that can finish it on the three. Off the foot of Sabato. Rasheed Silverman finding his way to the basket as an attacker scoring the basketball, and then, of course, a playmaker finding his buddy Quinn Cook over the corner was able to knock down the three ball. Quinn Cook, when you look at his career, I mean, you really have to size it up over four years. He's a career 42% shooter from the field, 36 from three, 83 from the line. His assist to turnover ratio is two and a half to one for his career. And he has put together a heck of a four-year stint here in Durham. And he really didn't play much as a freshman, so you have to think about the fact that he's gotten the majority of that done in two years. Shot clock at nine. Uh, he didn't need to force it, but he did anyway. The, the crowd kind of gave him a false impression that the shot clock was ticking down at about one. Austin Hamilton drills the three. And that's a big bucket from Austin Hamilton. They really needed that. And he's a young man as a senior, really epitomizes a lot of what Coach Matheny wants to do at Phoenix. He's the guy that pushes the tempo. Okafor. Just pat his rebounding stats on that play. And there's nothing you can do about that. If you're the Elon Phoenix, you don't have the size to match up with him on the interior. So if he misses one, he just taps it back in for the bucket. Six points, eight rebounds for the freshman. Winters rattles out, fall up, and in. Nice job there by Hairston. And Harrison doing a great job on the other end, the offensive rebound. And Duke playing a smaller lineup, four guards in Okafor right now. They've been susceptible in the offensive board on the last couple plays. Around the horn. Hamilton dribbled right into Matt Jones. He's got Okafor. He'll take it himself, count the basket. And Matt Jones, now a sophomore, has made tremendous strides in his career here at Duke. Now a contributor, getting the job done defensively and then able to finish through contact for an opportunity for an one at the other end. Matt Jones didn't get a lot of playing time last year, had to sit and watch. But this year has really found his way into the rotation and giving them another one of those long-range shooters able to step up and knock down threes. But you see now capable of finishing at the rim as well. Jones, one of the nine All-Americans on this roster. In fact, his sister is a guard at Texas A&M. They're just the third brother-sister combo to become McDonald's All-Americans. wonder who won the pickup battles in that driveway. Need have, we need to put a camera on that. <laughs> nice backdoor cut. Perfect execution there from Austin Hamilton. That's something out of the Bob McKilla playbook, and that's where Matt Matheny got his tutelage. And that's what you can do against Duke. Because they pressure the wing so much, you'll have those, especially if you're playing a smaller lineup. The back line on that play was Tyus Jones, who's not a shot blocker. For as good as he is, that's not his strong suit. Coach Matheny of Elon worked 10 years under Bob McKilla at Davidson. What a nice drive. You see Elon, they came here to play. Kevin Blake. We talked to Matt Matheny before this game. He wasn't scared of this game. He, he welcomed the challenge. No, we talked about it earlier. You know, they're going to get to a point to where they find their rhythm offensively, no question about it. It was simply about how far would they be behind and how much of a head start would they give Duke. Now Elon's starting to find their way in the offensive end. Okafor tried to knife in between a double team. Okafor ahead of the pass. Poked away by Luke Eddy. Great hustle by the reigning Colonial Player of the Week. Duke up by 10, 25-15 with 6.45 to play at Cameron. 25-15, 18 of the Blue Devils, 25 points coming in the paint, most of which coming 
by the true freshman number 15, Jalil Okafor. And happy birthday to Jalil Okafor getting it started off as a block party, and then he starts to go to work on the baseline spin and the two-hand slam, and Jalil Okafor all over the glass early, eight rebounds early in the game. Two on that play, two offensive rebounds alone, but he's gotten the job done early, and the thing I love most about Jalil Okafor he doesn't come out and take the night off because he's playing against guys that are smaller than him. He'll dominate them. He'll dominate big guys. He'll pretty much dominate everybody. And you got to love that, especially from a big guy. Three-second violation, I believe, on Duke. A rare mistake. It's seven turnovers already on the Blue Devils. That's not going to make that man very happy and they only average a little over nine a game so you talk about the rust the 11 day layoff is a long time in college basketball and you can see that early in the first half from their offensive standpoint 25 points for a lot of teams at this juncture would be good but for a team that averages 90 they're behind the pace another block for Okafor and then off the head out of bounds off of Kevin Blake's head, hopefully he's okay. Such kind of a nasty spill there. Looks like he's going to be all right. We talked about the turnovers as we see Kevin Blake going down. Can't tell from that angle whether he hit his head or not, but no, he's got the strong ab. The ab work, he kept his head up. The core muscles, right? Core muscles, that's great. Kevin Blake, a tremendous athlete, though, goes by Air Canada to his teammates for the Elon Phoenix, so I'm assuming that he goes pretty high up in the air. That's the only way you get a nickname like that. <laughs> Okafor goes to work, gets it back, draws the foul, and count the basket. Ten points for Okafor. And he continues to work. You see, he's not happy about the fact that he missed the first shot, but Jalil Okafor stays with it, using that size and strength to finish through the contact opportunity and one. 6-11, a 7-4 wingspan. As you mentioned, he's not going to let up on anybody, no matter how big or small the opponent is. And it's his birthday. He knows Chicago right. is watching right now. Whitney Young High School product won a state championship last year. He ain't going to let Chicago down on his birthday. <laughs> what better birthday present? Second, another double-double. Yeah, second straight year that uh, Coach K and Coach Cape will have brought the best player out of Chicago down here to Durham. Last year, a guy who Jalil played AAU with by the name of Jabari Parker, pretty good player. It worked out pretty well for him. <laughs> I sure it did. Shot clock at eight. Bad pass cross court. And Jones was bumped and fouled on the run out. The undefeated Washington Huskies go up against slick shooter Buddy Heald and the Sooners in the MGM Showcase, number 15 Oklahoma versus 16th ranked Washington. That's Saturday night at 9 o'clock on ESPNU, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Jefferson banging bodies, and Elon get credit there to Kevin Blake to draw the offensive foul. Kevin Blake putting his body in the right position. A smart play by Blake, really just to get in there, knowing that Jefferson would not have much room to be able to maneuver. Kevin Blake stepping in, great job to pick up the offensive foul, and now Emil Jefferson has to go to the bench with his second foul in the first half. This is Winters, the son of the NBA veteran. Book it, nice shot. Mid-range jumper. That's six points. Hairston has six, and then Duke missing on the other end. And really since the, you know, probably the first ten minutes of the game, Elon has played Duke even. Look at the quick hands there by Jones. Alley -oop. And a quick 
Quick response by Luke Eddy. A great comeback by Eddy. Not giving in to the crowd or anything simply because of the highlight play. Pushing it back down the floor and taking advantage, advantage of Duke getting back in transition. Okafor just played a game of catch with himself. Tapped it up. Got it back. Winslow. Runner by Luke Eddy. And Luke Eddy, not just a shooter, he does a lot of his damage just like that, attacking the basket. Of course, he's a very capable three point shooter, but he's gotten it going now, attacking the basket against this Duke defense. He's been instant offense all year long. Off the bench for Elon. Phoenix, give the Phoenix credit, they're keeping it close. Nine point game. But tough to stop the alley oop. Winslow slams it home. Thank you much, Duke and Elon here in Durham. Blue Devils up by nine. What do we know about Elon? Well, they're located in Elon, North Carolina, about a 45-minute bus ride down I-85. Founded in 1889, enrollment of over 6,000. They're now in the Colonial Athletic Conference after years in the Southern Conference. And I asked Matt Matheny if there's one thing you want the people out there to know about Elon that maybe they don't. He just said, you know what, guys? We are a great school. It is a great place to come and learn and be a part of athletics and everything else. Very positive about his six years with Elon. When I got to know Coach Matheny a little bit last year, I had the opportunity to call the Duke-Elon game that was played at the Greensboro Coliseum. And one thing that he's consistent, he feels as though Elon has the most beautiful campus in the country. He loves that school. He loves the three-pointer as well, but he doesn't like it as much when it's the opposing team knocking him down. Rasheed Suleiman now stepping up, knocking down the second three-pointer for the Blue Devils tonight. Suleiman with six. He's hitting 37% from downtown this year. Coach Matheny had a, a large part to do with one of the best three-point shooters in the game right now. Coach Stephen Curry at Davidson when he was assistant under Coach Bob McKillop. And, uh, they had a little success with yes. that group, we think. Elite eight, I'd say so. Good hustle by Elon. And almost got another attempt at it. One thing for certain, the Phoenix will continue to fight. They got down 19 at Missouri in their last time out, but continue to fight and actually ended up losing that game closely at the end. I think it ended up being a five-point game, but they got back, had the ball, down one with 20 seconds left, unable to make a shot. But they kept playing. Nifty move there by Quinn Cook. He's got seven. And check foul on Suleiman. Quinn Cook finding his way to the basket, not just a shooter, but Quinn Cook averaging 15 points per game is getting the job done in so many different areas this year for Duke, and he is their unquestioned leader. And the thing you love most about Quinn Cook, no matter who's on the court, he's always going to be the most confident guy. His coaching staff says, and I've seen that from him since he was a high schooler, that's always the case. Almost a terrific steal by Cook. Working around the horn, an open three. Elon just can't buy a bucket from downtown for most of this first half. They had hit seven of their last ten field goals before that possession. Well, I'm sure that the Duke uh, group got a talking to by Coach K. Whenever you see a team going seven out of nine on you, you're going to give them a little lecture roll. I think Coach K kind of got to his team a little bit and let them know, hey, guys, they're starting to pick it up. We need to do it as well on the defensive end. Phoenix just one of eight from three, and I think they just whistled Plumlee for a foul down low. Playing behind Jack Anton. You can see Marshall Plumlee. He's one of their rim protectors, so important in college basketball. As you mentioned, Corey, they don't have a ton of depth in the paint, so he's going to have to play some valuable minutes this year. UConn and Duke, a rivalry renewed this year. The undefeated Blue Devils are title contenders, but don't underestimate the defending champion Huskies. Connecticut battles second-ranked Duke. Journey to the tourney presented by Sonic, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Thursday night at 8 o'clock on ESPN, the home court of college hoops. You see what UConn and Duke have done thus far. There is life beyond Shabazz Napier. Ryan Boltwright having a heck of a year 
for Connecticut. Absolutely, but as I look at this graphic and I see that Brema had 40 on 13 for 13, that's a good night. It's an impressive <laughs> number, no question. <laughs> that's a good week. He did it all in one night. Didn't miss a shot. 13 of 13 from the field. Good play off the inbounds, but Elijah Bryant just kind of lost his bearings, didn't know where he was in relation to the rim. And that's one he's going to want back. He had a wide open layup. One of the reasons for the Elon struggles has been Luke Eddy had to go to the bench. He's back on the court now, and unable to come up with that one, but he's that guy that really gets them going offensively. Foul down low on Elon. That's on Anton. Coach McFaney and I hit you with a little nugget before the game was a four-year letterman on the football team at Davidson. Only played basketball two years, was a captain of both football and basketball as a senior at Davidson, but actually played four years of football and was playing professional football, American football overseas mm -hmm. when he got the call from Coach McKellar about coming back and being a basketball coach. You can sense talking to him. He's got some of that football toughness. Oh, yeah. He's definitely got the toughness. No, no question about he, he's it. He's not a man lacking confidence or toughness as a coach. You see what Okafor has done on his birthday. His 19th birthday already. Another double-double. 10 points and 10 rebounds. This is the part of his game right here, Corey, that he needs to improve on the free throw shooting because you know Come March, he's going to get fouled in some key spots. This is true, but he is a very good shooter as well. That's one of the other attributes to his game. A very good shooter for a guy that's pretty much seven feet. Ultra four. Give him another rebound. That's 11. Watson. Oh, great job of poking that ball free from behind. It was Hairston on the steal. Basket here will go a long way for Elon. If they can get some momentum going into halftime, get this down to 13, maybe even 12, it gives them a little life going into the locker room. Shot clock is off. Down to five. And that's how the first half will come to a close. Elon, despite the fact that the Phoenix are just one of nine for three, staying competitive, but have no answer for that man. The top freshman, and maybe the top big man of the country. 10 points, 11 rebounds for Jalil Okafor. Duke on top, 36 to 21, as we set up the studio. You're watching ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by Kate Yours. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. The Duke Blue Devils leading Elon 36-21 at the half, trying to extend their nation's best 37 overall home winning streak, 113 consecutive home victories against Adam Conference opponents. Mike Morgan alongside former Virginia Cavalier, All-American Corey Alexander. Great to be with you here on this Monday night. Pretty much what we expected so far in terms of the score, but one of the things we talked about, Corey, was 11 days off for Duke. Exams, the rust factor, not playing a game. How do you think they showed so far? Well, I think they've done pretty well. However, nine turnovers early for Duke in the first half is pretty much their average for a game. When you look at that, it's something that you see the rust is definitely hitting them early. Of course, one guy who did not look very rusty, the big man in the middle with Okafor. But give the credit to Eli. They got some good shooting early on. Absolutely. Luke Eddy was the guy that really got them going. And it was because of his penetration that Elon was able to get a rhythm going offensively. But on the other side for Duke, they made it simple. Put it in with two hands. Justice Winslow on the break, doing it defensively. Emil Jefferson under the basket not with the two-hand dunk. And then again on the alley-oop is Justice Winslow with the highlight slam.
for the Blue Devil. You see the numbers, the Duke Blue Devils. Ordinarily, you see 52%. You say that's a great half. That's actually two points below their season average, the number two in the nation in field goal percentage. And, of course, for Elon, they shot the ball well at times, but from behind the arch, just one of nine. Obviously, if the Phoenix are going to make a run of it tonight, that number will have to improve. And that's one of the big staples of their program, being able to shoot the three-pointer. And without that, they're going to have a hard time having success here in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Same starting five for the second half for the men in white. And back to work, it's Okafor. A quick pivot and a fadeaway jumper. That's a little extra set in his repertoire. It's there, though, and it's unfair that he has it. When you talk about a guy that size, but with his athletic ability and his skill, it's pretty much not fair. So many things to love about Okafor's game, and I love about it. He's a big man who loves to play big. And we talked before the game, and, you know, I get a lot of people calling me, especially NBA scouts, asking me questions about a lot of these guys. I had the opportunity to coach with them over before in the Hoop Summit this past spring. Offensive foul on Tyus Jones. And when people, you know, they ask questions, they say, well, who does he remind you most of? Well, in my opinion, he reminds me most of Tim Duncan. I had the opportunity to play with Tim Duncan his rookie year in San Antonio. And Jalil is a back-to-the-basket guy who's extremely difficult to move off of the block. But as you can see, he shoots the ball. He has huge hands. He's a very good passer. And when you think of all of those, the one guy at a 6'11", you know, it may not be quite as athletic as Tim Duncan, but close. And Tim Duncan's never really been known to be a great athlete. Right. <laughs> but, you know, when he was in college, Tim was very thin. You know, Jalil's a lot bigger than Tim was, you know, when he was in college. Yeah, there is Jalil at 270, and you and I were on the court watching him warm up. The first thing you noticed, he looks leaner, but not skinny lean, just fat in the muscle lean. Well, he's toned up, and of course, that's what happens with pretty much all these guys. Coming into college, you get on a good weightlifting regimen, and you eat better, most likely. You're not eating the your fast food before your high school games. You're actually eating good meals. From that standpoint, the guys normally lose a lot of body fat. Nice pass inside the Jefferson. Great look by Tyus Jones. There's a lot of true freshmen in college basketball that are great shooters and scorers. I haven't seen many that had the instincts and the great passing ability of Tyus Jones. And I've been watching him since he was a freshman in high school, and he's played the same way. He's normally always the smartest player on the court. And he's a guy, of course, he can score very well. It's not a question about it, but his passing ability and really leadership ability are the best attributes of his game. Jefferson misfires on the first free throw. When you look at this trio of Tyus Jones, Justice Winslow, and Jalil Oakwood, these guys have played together in USA Basketball for the last three years. I mean, you know, their, their chemistry is great, but it comes from a lot of time on the floor. And Tyus and Jalil are basically best friends, and Justin's right in there with those guys. They don't go many places without each other, which is part of the reason why they all ended up here at right. Duke together. Jones already with three assists. He leads this Duke team with just under six a game. Quinn Cook, the senior, that led him. There's Okafor on a steal, and Okafor takes it all away. Fourteen points for the big man. Who didn't look real big on that play. He looked like a guard here. Well, how many 6'11 guys in the country can do this? We talked about the huge hands, but the touch also to be able to finish it. And he's not just doing it because it's his birthday. He can do this type of thing all the time. Okafor will have to settle for 14 points, 11 rebounds. And then a break for Duke as Hairston stepped out of bounds on the long rebound. And Neil Jefferson doing a great job pursuing the basketball, not conceding and allowing Elon to have it. And because of his effort, Duke gets the basketball back. And now the officials making sure that Okafor and Jack Anton don't get too handsy. And Anton not going to just give him the block. And he's going to pick up a foul right after the warning. He just kept doing it. In defense of Jack Anton, what else are you going to do if you're trying to defend Okafor one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, you can't allow him just to establish himself right on the block, and Anton just trying to get his chest into him. He doesn't have his, he doesn't have his hands in there, but just trying to move him with his chest. 
But in college basketball today, that's illegal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed a little bit, hasn't it? It really has. Now, every year they talk about cleaning up post play. Third foul on Anton. Winslow on a three. Another offensive rebound for Okafor. Finds a teammate. Second effort, Jefferson. And the largest lead for Duke. Three and the foul. Finally, Tanner Sampson, their leading scorer, who was held to a goose egg in the first half, buries a triple and a chance at a four-point play. And a great response from the junior, Tanner Sampson, for Elon at a time where Duke's crowd really starts to get into it. Jalen Lokafor is going. Amir, Amir Jefferson picks up the offensive rebound and score, and they come back with a four-point play. That's a huge play for Elon, and, of course, more important to get Sampson on the board. Cook fouled him. First four points of the game for Sampson out of Aurora, Colorado. High school teammates with Ryan Winters, now his college teammate. And a bump foul as Winslow got hit in the air. And that's a tough matchup, really, for any guard having to guard Justice Winslow coming off those screens. One thing that you, Justice Winslow has been this size since he was about 15 years old. He didn't come to Duke and put on a lot of extra muscle. Mm -hmm. He's been this big for a long time. So he knows how to play with that size and that weight and does a great job maneuvering around the basket. That's why he's such a matchup problem, because with his strength, but he's still able to move and be very agile as a point guard. So that's why he's so difficult and which makes him a great defender. And also because he's pretty much stronger than everybody he's going to play against. He has struggled at the line this year and an empty trip there. But another offensive rebound. This time Jefferson Cook. Okafor had it. Might have gotten fouled. No call. Here come the Phoenix numbers. And a three. Knocked down by Hamilton. Two back-to-back -back possessions now. Seeing the senior, Austin Hamilton, knocking down a three. And again, within 13 points, the Phoenix aren't going to go away. They're going to continue to fight. Okafor. I want to check if he's got his wallet after that one. Well, one thing's for certain with Coach Matheny, he's not going to just allow a team just to do whatever they want to do. And here, as you see, as he, on the spin, there's no question about whether or not it's a foul. No one's complaining. <laughs> he got his money's worth out of that foul. <laughs> Colin Luther getting in there, making sure Jaleel Locus had to earn it at the free throw line. Okafor just 52% from the free throw line. And you talked about his free throw shooting woes. He had to shot the ball well from the free throw line. He, he may start getting the hack of Jaleel every mm -hmm. time they come down the floor because they can't guard him if they let him score, if they let him play. So from that standpoint, he might be getting fouled a little bit more. You remember Shaquille O'Neal his last year at LSU. That poor guy had bruises all over his body after every game. That wasn't just the LSU, that was his entire career. <laughs> <laughs> he got fouled pretty much every time he touched the basketball. is playing Elon basketball, hitting open threes. They had him in the first half. They're connecting in the second. Okafor makes it look easy. If you're going to foul him, you cannot allow him to be able to get the shot up and finish. Great pass in. Of course, his skill level allows him to make these shots. But if you're going to add that extra and put him on the line, make sure he doesn't make that shot. It's a lot easier said when I'm sitting up here <laughs> 40 feet above the court. And the free throw struggles continue. The only thing not going right for Okafor on his 19th birthday tonight, 17 points, 13 rebounds. Right now, if you're Elon, if you're able to get a basket here, now you've established yourself with some rhythm offensively, and you've gotten Duke's attention, especially from behind the three-point arc.
biggest error there on Luther. And the Phoenix giving away 12 turnovers on Elon. Phoenix hanging tough. Duke up 13 with 15.57 to play. Jalil Okafor has 17 points, another double-double Duke up 13 here in the second half. Don't forget Sunday afternoon on ESPNU, scoring threat Wesley Saunders and a dangerous Crimson look for a breakthrough victory against Tony Bennett's undefeated Virginia Cavaliers. Harvard taking on number six Virginia Sunday at noon on ESPNU, part of Holiday Hoops presented by Kay Jewers. Mike Morgan alongside a former Virginia Cavalier. Or is it former or once a Cavalier, always a Cavalier, Corey Alexander? I'll, I'll let you figure that one out. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that. But right now, the thing is coming out of a 1 3 1 zone, seeing if they can slow down Duke. Okafor. That's just too easy. Well, and the problem is, again, with your Duke, it's simply about just get a shot. Because if you get it on the glass, as he's going to go get the offensive rebound. There's very little Elon can do about that. Boxing him out really doesn't work because he reaches over top of the majority of their guys. 19 points, 14 rebounds for the sensational freshman by way of Chicago, Illinois. Steal. Breakaway. Land. Suleiman. I honestly believe as Duke continues to go on this year, that's where they will improve the most is that defensive pressure, getting out in passing lanes and being the Duke that we've been used to seeing for many years. Nice take by Dimitri Thompson, his first bucket. This 1-3-1 one, one zone is finding the spot. Now if you're Duke, do you settle for all jump shots or continue to try to attack? Nice swing to the corner. He could almost give Okafor an assist. He just tapped it right to his teammate, Justice Winslow, who has nine. And the second chance points is really, Elon has done a very good job on the first defensive stop. Is picking up the basketball and being able to come up with a defensive rebound that's really hurt him. Timeout called by Elon. 52-35, Blue Devils in the lead. ESPNU brings you coverage of the NCAA Division III Football Championship. Two teams take the field and vie to become national champions. NCAA Division III Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual Friday at 7 on ESPNU. Three things you can be certain of in Division III, death taxes, and Mountain Union will meet Wisconsin Whitewater in the title game. That's happened nine of ten years. And speaking of college football, David Cutcliffe has really brought the Duke Blue Devil football program to a whole other level. Wallace Wade Stadium, the construction going underway right now. Didn't take long for the Bulldozers to roll in just two weeks after the end of the football season. The 85-year-old stadium looks like this, and now renovation plans include removing the track, lowering the field, constructing a new press tower, and adding seats and installing a new scoreboard. You can thank David Cutcliffe for that because that man has done a sensational job with a program that really struggled on the gridiron for a long time. You know who else you can thank for that? Who's that? Coach Mike Krzyzewski. It all comes back to Coach K, doesn't Well, you want to know why? Because he said he doesn't care, doesn't matter. He will stand in front of a bulldozer. This building <laughs> will be here for as long as he's alive. Right. And this is where Duke will play. So they, they don't have to put much money into this place. You can put it in the football field. <laughs> three for Justice Winslow, who has 12 now. All three true freshmen in the starting lineup making big impacts so far tonight. By the way, this is the 75th anniversary of Cameron Indoor Stadium. 75 years. One of my favorite places to play in college basketball. Nice job going to Tony Sabato, who was quarantined in the paint. Six points for Sabato. And this 1-3-1 one, one again. 
for Elon. Can they come up with the defensive rebound? It's not about getting a stop. It's about finishing the play. And the answer is no on that possession. Another second chance opportunity for Duke. And again, you, this team is way too good to continue to give them that many opportunities. Run out. And a layup is good for Thompson. Elon down 16. Although, you know, Duke has a comfortable lead, they have never really been able to relax because this team has really given them everything they had. It's just a second chance opportunity. We see another offensive rebound by Duke. And Matt Jones firing again, two for a dollar, unable to come away with a three on either one of those attempts. But again, another stop for Elon. Now they have an opportunity right into this lead just a little more just to stay within striking distance. Eight offensive rebounds, 18 overall for Okafor. And another shot buried by Dimitri Thompson. He's given him good minutes off the bench. He's got six, and it's down to a 14-point lead. And that's what Coach Matheny talked about, how much fun it is to coach this team. And now to come up with the turnover, because he knows that they're going to continue to fight regardless of the circumstances. foul on the penetration is Elijah Bryant. Elon making things interesting here in Durham. 55-41 our score. Elon 55-41 to with 11.36 to play. Mike Krzyzewski sitting on 991 career victories inching closer and closer to a thousand. You see the rather prestigious list. Jim Beheim, of course the one active guy left on the list at 953. Bobby Knight at 902. Dean Smith, 879. Speaking of Dean Smith, assuming Duke has any kind of season that you would expect this year in the ACC, he will pass Dean Smith for the most ACC wins this year. All he needs in that category is six. What a career for Mike Krzyzewski. Absolutely, and you talk about, you know, just that, that graphic alone, and you talk about the coaches in that, and you have so many coaches out there saying you realize how hard it is just to win one game in college to have 991. That's that's amazing. He had his game against his alma mater Army a couple of weeks ago, and that was obviously a, a special trip down memory lane. And it kind of allowed us to go back to the process of how Coach K got here and how patient Duke was. And, the amazing job he has done building Duke into a powerhouse. That's a great play by Rasheed Suleiman getting inside of that zone and finding Emil Jefferson. And again, whenever it's a zone, the, the tendency is to sit around and shoot jump shots. That time, Suleiman doing a great job attacking, not settling for a jump shot. Okafor playing some point guard. Look at the feed. Got to finish the line. Oh, he's going to have a conversation with Sheed after that one. You can't blow the big fella's assist. <laughs> Second effort on the stick back. It's Thompson. And Dimitri Thompson has really stepped up his production here in the second half. Giving Coach Matheny a lot of energy, a lot of effort. Jefferson with an easy deuce. He's got 11. Oh, there's a steal by Jefferson. Takes it strong. Count the basket. We talked about the X Factors for Duke this year, and I mentioned we see Suleiman earlier but this guy right here Emil Jefferson is going to be another one of those guys a veteran basketball player who focuses on the defensive end of the court not necessarily offensively getting the job done although he is a capable scorer he's a guy that's willing to sacrifice his offense to make them a much better defensive team Blue Devils just six of 14 thus far tonight for the free throw line Six of 15. Now, Jalil Okafor has just set 
a Duke freshman record with 18 rebounds tonight. And for those scoring at home, there have been some very good freshmen here at Duke. Yes, <laughs> just a few. He's got 19 points on his 19th birthday, and he's got 18 rebounds. And then we, we talk to him after the game, I'm sure he will tell you that this really hasn't been a very good game for him. That's how much perfectionist he is when it comes to playing basketball. Rumley tears away the rebound. impressed with the crowd here tonight considering the students are gone there's yep. not the the real camera crazies over there because the majority of the students are gone away for they just finished their exam break maybe some of them hung around for one more home game those might be the um, camera crazy alumni those are the older people like mine your age that come back to do this when the students are gone <laughs> almost like you going to play basketball every night. that's right Samson wants a screen. Shot clock at five. Hamilton with a heave. Good pass. What you got to say on that one? Uh, not yet. Great pass by Austin Hamilton. If he was finished, he would have gotten an assist. Absolutely. I would have gave it to him anyway. Sure. I'm not sure if the scorekeeper would have. Baseline jumper for Suleiman. He's got ten. Father from Nigeria, mother from Jamaica, junior year out of Houston. Duke trying to pull away. As Winslow is whistled for an offensive foul. Most of the time, if Justin Winslow runs into someone, they're going to lose that battle. That time, Samson got himself set, did a great job absorbing the contact. The fish was right on top of a great call. Offensive foul. Season high 15 turnovers for Duke. And that's a byproduct of the break. The we talk about 11 days off, that rust. That's what happens. You get out of sync because they were playing their best basketball at Wisconsin, you know, 12 days ago. They were great. But they had that continuity going, and they will continue to work on it. They'll get it back. But talking with Jeff Capel, they basically said that, hey, we put them through tough practices because we want them to be able to try to simulate the environment. Bump foul down low. There's my guy looking sharp today. Jeff Capel, maybe next in line at Duke. Who knows? Second ranked Duke leading Elon 63 to 45 with 7.54 to play. The undefeated Washington Huskies will go up against slick shooter Buddy Heald and the Sooners in the MGM Showcase number 15 Oklahoma versus number 16 Washington. That's Saturday night at 9 o'clock on ESPNU, part of Holiday Hoops presented by K. George. Mike Morgan alongside former Virginia Cavalier Corey Alexander who had not one but two wins in this building, Cameron Indoor Stadium. As you take a look at Jeff Capel, assistant coach, former head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, and a guy that, as you mentioned, is certainly building his resume in a good way. When, when you look at it, I mean, of course, as great as he's been, Coach K won't be able to do this forever. <laughs> at some point when he steps up, you know, he's has so many guys in his coaching tree now, you know, the question becomes, who will be next? And, you know, you've got Johnny Dawkins, you've got Tommy Amber, so many great coaches that have come through the program and been Duke players. And, of course, when you're Coach K, I think you, get, you earn the right to name your successor. But, of course, my vote would be, you know, the guy we just saw, Jeff Capel. I think, you know, what he's done here is when his return back to Duke, now the associate head coach, if you look at the recruiting, he has a large part to do with them getting guys like Jamel Overcourt and Jabari Parker, et cetera. 
Numbers for the Phoenix and a good finish by Kevin Blake. Fisher wondering the last time Elon defeated an ACC school. You got to go back to 2005. They defeated Clemson. Tigers at that time led by Oliver Purnell. Now up to Paul. Well, when you look at the overall series record between Elon and Duke, you would be surprised to see it. The overall series, Duke leads 19 to 7. But then you sit back and say, wait a minute, Elon's got seven wins against Duke? But they took a 74-year break. Right. <laughs> one, one little caveat to that stat. <laughs> they started the series back up four years ago, but up until that point, they took a 74-year break. So um, basketball was a little different, I believe, back at the time when they were splitting the meetings. One for two for Okafor. He's got 20 points now. 18 rebounds. Only other player to go 20 and 10 of the ACC this year, Montrez Harrell of Louisville. Out of bounds to Duke. I'll give you another number that Okafor is flirting with here in the final 658. If he can collect two more rebounds, he'll be the first Duke player to go 20-20 since Elton Brand in 1999. I would have won that trivia question. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Elton Brand was an unreal rebound. Nice pass. And there's 22 for Okafor. And the thing you love most about that play is the unselfishness of this Duke team. Quinn Cook with the drive. He doesn't care about getting the bucket. He's more concerned about getting the assist as his fourth one on the game. But he's been the guy that this coaching staff has really credited for helping these young players come along because as a senior, he didn't, you know, come in and say, hey, this is my team. You guys take a back seat. He sacrificed and given up a lot of his role to help these guys out. Okafor getting fouled again. Quinn Cook the entire time knows that this is going to be a pass. Great point guard play, rewarding the big fella. And when you've got a big like this, you want to make sure you keep him happy. Unfortunately for Duke, they will only have him for about the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of NBA teams would be hard-pressed to pass uh, Jaleel Okafor. Realistically speaking, talking to a lot of NBA scouts and teams, as loaded as the draft was a year ago, with Andrew Wiggins, Jabari Parker, Aaron Gordon, Jaleel Okafor would have been the number one pick last year had he come out. You go back to the team with Montrez Harrell, Aaron Gordon, Marcus Smart, was a U-19 team that played two summers ago, coached by Billy Donovan, Shaka Smart, and Tony Bennett. Jaleel Okafor, as a 17-year-old, was a star on that team. You just don't see many guys his size with that youth that move as well as he does. And that want to play with their back to the basket. Right. Stepped out of bounds, no basket. In a lot of ways, Okafor is a bit of a throwback, and he'll hear it from the crowd here. 23 points, 19 rebounds. 19 is a good number for him today. Yes, it is. You know, it's not a 2020, but, you know, 19 on his 19th birthday. I'll take it. <laughs> Absolutely. Take the 23 to go with it. And the scoring column. Don't know if we're going to see Okafor again. Duke starting to pull away up 20. Nice move. Everything but the bucket for Suleiman. Twenty-three points, the 19 rebounds, a Duke freshman record, and flirting with the first 2020 performance since Elton Brand about 15 years ago. No disrespect to Elon, but those are Whitney Young numbers. 
<laughs> Those are numbers he was putting up last year in high school. And here's my question on, on Okafor, and obviously, you know, they've already played Michigan State. They've already played Wisconsin. Yeah, he's played against the other best big man Absolutely. in the country already and won that battle, by the way. Both times, right. But do you wonder, as a true freshman, as you start getting into games 25, 26, 27, does the big man wear down at all? Well, he's going to have his freshman struggles, but his freshman struggles will be different because he's not the average freshman. And more importantly, he's a guy that makes his money in the paint. He, he's not the guy that's got to rely on shooting jump shots, etc. He needs to make more free throws, but he's going to have an advantage against anyone he plays every night out in college basketball. Realistically speaking, Jaleel Okafor, Stanley Johnson, Cliff Alexander, do not belong in college basketball. Those guys should be going directly to the NBA. It's really wasting a year for them to come here. It's great for Coach K and everyone to be able to see him in college, but he doesn't belong in college. Nice floater by Luke Eddy. He's got eight. Elon keeping it within 15 now. And when I say he doesn't belong in college, it has nothing to do with academics. It's solely about the fact that he's that good to where he could have gone directly out of high school to the NBA, where, let's face it, our best players in the last 15 years have none. Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Tracy McGrady, etc. So these guys went from high school to college. It's not a college basketball rule. That's the NBA that doesn't allow them to come out right now. Big night for that big man. Jalil Okafor leading his two three levels tonight. Who lead it by 15. Ken's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. 67-52, a Monday night special here in Durham, North Carolina. Cameron Indoor Stadium celebrating its 75th year in existence. Duke trying to remain one of the nine undefeated teams in college basketball. Up by 15 over the Phoenix of Elon. Jalil Okafor, 23 points, 19 rebounds. A Duke freshman record. He has dominated from start to finish. Speaking of domination, freshman on the AP All-American team. Harrison Barnes. Andrew Wiggins, Jaleel Okafor, pretty good company right there. Right, but those guys, Harrison Barnes and Andrew Wiggins, were preseason All-Americans. Neither of them made it in the postseason. I think this guy has a great chance to do it. Now, Jabari Parker was a postseason All-American last year, but he wasn't on the preseason team. Jaleel Okafor will probably be the first one that's on the preseason team that will actually make it by the end of the year. Suleiman connects on the first free throw. points for the junior and yeah, one thing about Duke the hey they haven't been able to bury Elon he, I mean down 17 and that looked like a foul <laughs> they got away with but that was the 20th rebound right there for Jalil Okafor as he plays point guard and turns it over give it to the guard big fella but he's got that 20th rebound, so now it is a 20-20 game for Jaleel Lokovic. First one for a Duke player since Elton Brand in 1999. And I believe that's the only reason he was back in the game. Most likely we will see him exit very shortly. Jones hacked and fouled. He'll go to the line for a pair. You see the first 2020 game by a freshman at Duke history, the first one overall in 15 years. I have a feeling that young man might be primed for another 2020 game before this season's over. Well, there's a possibility. I mean, he chases the basketball. He doesn't just wait for it to come to him. If he doesn't get the ball, he'll go get it off the glass. And offensive rebounding is why he got the 20 tonight. He's been all over the offensive board. He's been a guy that's continued to do the job defensively. But the offensive glass is really where he's padded those numbers tonight. I like your Tim Duncan analogy. I, I've heard some people try to compare him to Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis was a quick twitch shot blocking machine. That's not Okafor's game. Anthony Davis was a six foot one point guard.
that grew right you know <laughs> nine ten inches he's been a big his entire life right and Davis did not have the offensive repertoire his one year at Kentucky that Okafor already has at Duke no but they're both from Chicago maybe that's there it. you go they are both from the Windy <laughs> but hey but one is from Mean Streets now there's a difference Anthony Davis is Mean Streets AU program Jalil Okafor is Mac Urban Fire. There's a big difference. There's a big rivalry between the two of those teams now. Corey Alexander breaking down geography here yeah. tonight. Okafor, look at that move. 25 for the freshman. Nice shot by Luke Eddy. I really like Luke Eddy. He's going to be a problem for the CAA. He's a guy that knows how to score and he doesn't have to sit behind the three-point line to do it. He had 27 off the bench. They nearly defeated Missouri. They lost to Northwestern in overtime and they beat Miami of Ohio. So in terms of an out-of-conference schedule, Elon has definitely bulked it up. They're ready to go in the Colonial. Well, in a game like this, you come in and I mean, if you look at it, Duke was 72 points. 15, 16 points below their season average right now. So if you're Coach Matheny, you're not happy about the fact that you only scored 54. But they've done the job for the most part defensively. Just the offensive board has really hurt them. Well, keep in mind, coming into this game, Duke was averaging 100 points at home. That's going to be a flagrant foul on Suleiman. Just not needed. Now, you don't want to see the game get ugly at this point, but the call is definitely going to go against Suleiman. There was way too much extracurricular activity, and Luke Eddy take an exception to it. There's already the foul as they caught it. Well, now you see it. Then <laughs> again, it's always the guy retaliating, getting caught. But it was Eddie who actually grabbed Suleiman's arm. Not to say that Suleiman should have tossed him off, but Suleiman really was trying to get his arm loose at that point. You always see the reaction, but with very few people are able to see it. But you saw in that first replay, Eddie, as he's going down, has Suleiman's arm wrapped up. Now you see we have a veteran crew tonight, Tony Green, Jimmy Lucky, Anthony Franklin, two of which are over there. That's the new DB Sport replay system. They used to use our technology. Now they've got what's the same technology they use in college football for instant replay. So they'll double check this, take a look at what happened and now the, official, through. the officials get all the angles that we've seen, so therefore they will see the angle where Eddie does grab Rasheed Suleiman's arm. I'm not sure if it will change anything. But at this angle, you see Eddie wraps Suleiman's arm. That's extracurricular on Eddie's part. Now, that goes too far for Rasheed Suleiman with the push. I think Suleiman definitely will be punished because of it. I'm not sure if that's going to be a flagrant one or flagrant two. But there will be consequences to Suleiman's actions. The question now becomes, does Eddie get anything because of it as well. Of course, flagrant two would be an automatic ejection. Flagrant one would be a different story. You wonder what the distinction is. You know, years ago, back when you played, Corey, they had what's called an intentional foul. They got rid of that terminology. Now it's flagrant one, excessive and or unnecessary action, not a legitimate play on the ball, hold or push from behind. Flagrant two, which you rarely see, excessive, severe, and or extreme and obviously any type of vulgarity, abuse of conduct, those result in an automatic ejection. Both result in two shots of the basketball. And by the letter of the law, I believe that will be a flagrant one on Rasheed Suleiman because it was excessive, but it didn't go over the top. It didn't yeah. escalate into a fight or anything of the such, and he walked away from the situation. So I honestly believe it will be a flagrant one on Rasheed Suleiman. I don't think the officials will toss him from this game, especially after seeing that he was retaliating. All right, so we have a personal foul. Two fouls on a play. 
personal foul and a contact technical on Suleiman. Which I think is fair. And Duke has just called a timeout while Elon gets ready to go to the free throw line as we take another look. As you see it, it's a reaction by Rasheed Suleiman as he's already committed the foul, but Luke Eddy grabs his arm and hand. Now the push to his head to get him off of him is why there was the technical foul, but Suleiman walks away, does not escalate the situation. The officials get in doing a great job, stop everything, and that's why Suleiman was, <laughs> Eddie walks on the back of Suleiman at that point, but receives Suleiman at that point really does a great job showing restraint because he doesn't allow for anything to escalate. And again, he was retaliating, he was caught retaliating, but Eddie did initiate that little squirmish. And so just to clean it up, Elon in the bonus, so Eddie's at the line for a one and one, then and after the one-on-one, -on -one, they'll clean things up with a contact technical on Suleiman. Hats off to the officials. I think they did a great job calling that one once they saw that it was Eddie really initiating that contact. And again, you know, just like being in school, he hit me first. Yeah, but I saw you hit him, so therefore you're getting in trouble. But they didn't punish extreme Suleiman severely because of it. They send Sampson to the line for the technical free throws. He's their best free throw shooter. This game was about to be put on ice. And if you're Elon, you still have a fighting chance with 95 seconds left to play. Well, this could be a six or seven point possession for Elon, and which could get them really back into striking distance by the end of this game. Great hands and a steal by Grayson Allen. One of those McDonald's All-American freshmen out of Jacksonville, Florida. And a foul on Elon with a minute and one second remaining. Now Duke. The consensus number two, Kentucky the consensus number one. Let's play a, a little matchup, shall we, Corey Alexander? If you take a look at the starting fives. Now, we all know Kentucky's the deepest team in the country, but as you look at that five against Duke's five, what do you take away? Well, my takeaway from this is very simple. The best defensive team in the country mm -hmm. versus the best offensive team in the country. I mean, it, it doesn't get any simpler Love than it. that. <laughs> Love because it. Kentucky defensively is suffocating. You watch them this weekend against North Carolina. They are suffocating defensively. They have so much size, et cetera. But the guard play of Kentucky, even though good, not as good as the guard play from Duke. And the Coach K not happy about this as Tyus Jones takes one to the face by Sampson. Under a minute left, Duke up 15 with the basketball. And it'll be another trip to the free throw line for Tyus Jones. Jones and Winslow have been good tonight, but the other freshman, Jalil Okafor, has been sensational. A 20-20 night on his 19th birthday. Yeah, at this point, you can't even call it 25-20 now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say 2020 20 anymore. Once Different you put category. that other five points in, it's got to be 25 20 now. <laughs> Okafor gets a final ovation from the crowd here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Eddie. Wow. I'll tell you what. Luke Eddie. What are you going to do to get in the starting lineup? He had 27 off the bench in the last game. Well, you know, for him, I think it's not a, a, a scenario where it's about he's being better as a starter. I think Coach Matheny likes him coming off the bench because he gives him a different scoring punch. He's got Austin Hamilton as a starting point guard, but yet when Matheny comes, I'm sorry, when, when 
when Eddie comes in the game, he gives him a scoring punch. Hamilton, not much of a score, but now he has the opportunity to play often against backups and reserves. And he's their leading scorer coming off the bench and their overall leading scorer and been very good tonight for the Elon Phoenix. This is the alumni band here. We talked about the alumni crazies. Now we got the alumni band going. They've done a great job tonight as well. And they got the enthusiasm. I like this guy on the front. Do you know what YOLO means on his hat? I'm going to need help on that one. <laughs> you only live once. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I just hit you with a little bit of hip hop culture. I, Corey, I like it. You see what I'm saying? That's what I just did right there. I, I just saw happened. that. I saw that. <laughs> You're taking it next level. Duke will bleed the clock here. Got to take one more shot. The Duke Blue Devils are going to extend their home winning streak to a nation's best 38 in a row. 9-0 on the season. Your final score, Duke 75 and Elon 62. That man, Jalil Okafor, with a career night, might be the first of several. 25 points and 20 rebounds. Coming up at 9 on the SPNU, it's the road to college football playoff. We'll be back in a moment for post-game coverage, but first, let's take you to the studio where Anish Shrupp and Dino Gaudio are standing by. All right, thank you.